Yeah, the light's shining on Emily Henderson. If you're a fan of HGTV's design star like I am, I know you were rooting for her. She's that cute blonde that was up <laughs> against the guy. And Emily won, and she was like, I can't believe it. You genuinely were surprised. I was surprised. I mean, the whole thing was like a dream anyway, and so I woke up that morning and... And you couldn't tell your husband the whole time. No, no, he had. I mean, he knew that the longer I was gone, the the better the news was. Um, but no, he had no idea how far I had made it. And and so yeah, up there, I just remember it felt like a car crash. Like I remember my hearing kind of went, and as soon as Vern announced it, like my hearing went, and I looked over to the right, and I saw you know they have these TV screens, and basically as soon as you get eliminated, your TV screen turns off. So Ooh. I looked over, and my TV screen was the only one on, and. And I just, I mean, I think it was a mild form of shock. Like, I remember I couldn't really hear for a second. And then everybody was rushing towards me. And it was, I mean, it was very surreal. That's such a cliched word, but it was very surreal. It sounds kind of scary in a way to find out, like, you're waiting for the TV monitor to go off or not. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. You're lucky you didn't pass out. I know. I know. No, it Ah. was really fun. It was really exciting. Yeah. So so now we're going to see you uh, with your your show, your very own show debuting tomorrow. What's the show called? Secrets from a Style. Mm-hmm. And, and it's on at 10. 10. On or HGTV. It, yeah, it's on at 7, too, if you seven have certain cable channels, okay. which I do. But yeah, so tomorrow's the one hour premiere, and then the series will, will start later. But uh-huh. it's just kind of a teaser and kind of a taste of what the show will be like. Um, I'm really excited. Yeah, we're excited for you. And <laughs> in the you. show, we're going to see you shopping, right? Yes. And so tell us. Maybe in the show we see where you shop. I mean, it was in New York, so we're seeing you shop no, in New York. No, it was, a, it was You were LA. shopping in L.A.? Mm-hmm. Okay. So where did you shop in L.A. for the show? And, and then give us some other great shopping ideas. So I'm a big vintage girl, so I shopped it. For this for, me, for this show, mainly vintage, although some of the pillows and accessories came from, like, West Elm and CB2 and, like, Crate and Barrel. But I go, went to the flea market, and you'll see a segment of that. And um, Which one? I actually went to the trading post, Miller's trading post, because it was just honestly more convenient than mm-hmm. I think it was the Rose Bowl that day and uh, that can be kind of a madhouse but I I mean I go every Sunday I religiously um, it's almost like a religion on Sunday actually but I wake up really early and the earlier you get there the better the furniture is and don't meander don't go slowly if you're looking for furniture whip around look you know as fast as you can don't go into the stalls just see what catches your eye because the dealers are are buying all the furniture and the, the store you know store owners are buying all the furniture really early. So what I do is I go around once looking for furniture, and then I go around a second time looking for all the smalls. Um, and I'm normally there for like four hours. And and I just, you know, I try and have a, have a focused list in my brain, or often I write them down because it can be very overwhelming. Completely. You know, there's so, especially you if you're new to it. Yes. And so and, and you'll convince yourself you need something. So if mm-hmm. you just have, I do that all the time. Oh my gosh, you're talking my talk. Yeah. <laughs> so if you just have a list of the things you need, you'll always be reminded of, yeah. of them. Otherwise, you'll It's forget. like a Christmas shopping list as opposed to, well, maybe a few of these extras. Yes, exactly. Stay on budget. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I do try and think of the color story and I, I stay flexible, but I, you know, I try and remember what colors I'm looking for. And then I try and not um, get things that are too bitsy or small because even though, I mean, I have like this amazing collection of dollhouse fly swatters that are like so weird and beautiful and like they're, they're teeny. But I think in general, people... I get really scared of small things because they're they're afraid that their house will look like um you know full of tchotchkes and kind of that crazy person yeah. house. So I try and and for clients um get things that are more substantial that could live on their own as well as in a collection of things. Um, so you what know, about I, buying artwork when you're out at those places? I mean, how do you find a great piece of artwork? Which I think you did for the show tomorrow. Yeah. Oh yeah, I found this amazing huge portrait of a. And what's president. what's your rule or what's the some guidance in doing rule that? Rule is that anything can be artwork um not anything obviously like a shoe it could not be artwork <laughs> but basically well, the woman in her shoe come yeah, on <laughs> no but it can be you know it can be an old silhouette it can be student drawings it could be um framing a collection of vintage spoons it could be you know a collection of doilies i think that um you just have to doily scares people so yeah. forget i said okay. that but basically um you can kind of frame anything that um, that you find beautiful, and and so I just try and um, you know open my mind a little bit when I'm shopping and do, would I want this on the wall? You know, it could. I even bought a vintage um, wire sculptured frame, and I have that in a collection on my um, on my wall. So I think that you know. 
there's the obvious choices of like all the oil paintings, which I love. But I just remember that you can you can kind of frame anything, and if you mix in objects with your artwork, it just it looks it has this gallery effect, and it just looks really interesting and fun. And again, getting into the diagnosis of who we are, right? Mm-hmm. Which is your whole philosophy, and which is what we're going to see on the show. It's about finding uh, what turns us on, right? What makes us not just the colors on our closet. But some of these other moments where we like to dine out mm-hmm. or we like or to hang. if you look at your accessories, I wear mainly um, brass and leather jewelry for some reason. And in my apartment, it's, you know, all of my metallics are brass and all not all of them. But I, in general, I'm definitely inclined towards that. And, you know, I have leather poos and leather chair. And, and so I think you can look at if you like brand new silver shiny pieces, then that's your metallic, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So you can kind of like analyze your accessories as well as your clothes. Love it. Well, tell everybody again. And uh, your web, not your website, but your blog My is... My blog is thebrasspedal.com, and it's P-E-T-A-L, not P-E-D-A-L. <laughs> and then people can connect with you there. And then, of course, yep. the show tomorrow on HGTV, H- 7 and, and or 10, tomorrow indeed. night. Indeed. And it's uh, Secrets from a Stylist, the big premiere. Please <laughs> watch it. TiVo Mad Men, watch oh. Secrets from a Stylist. Oh, so fun having you. We'll talk to you <laughs> Thank again. Thank you so much. Congratulations. So. High five to High you. High five. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, coming up next, i got some ideas for you that you can tackle in the garage. What? The garage? Yeah, you don't have to worry about organizing the whole garage. I've got something really simple you can do to feel like you're you're making some good progress, like tomorrow. (laughs) This is Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. Don't get away. Welcome back. We're rocking and having fun this Saturday, as we always do, from 2 to 4. I'm Cindy Dole. This is Home Wizards, where we talk about the most important place in your life, your home, and how to enjoy it more, right? And, and what are you working on or wish that you could change in your home? I hope you let me know. I want to know about it. You can email me, Cindy, at CindyDole.com. And while you're out, uh, maybe running errands or thinking about those to-dos, I hope that when you get back to your computer, uh, that you'll check into my forum and chat, because that's a place, uh, 24-7, where we can talk about the things we do here, your home, your garden, your life improvement, uh, share some pictures. Maybe you, you have something you're trying to tackle. You don't know how to do it. Uh, your chance to get geared up before that next weekend comes, all right? And you can also join me uh, in through your uh, Facebook where you can say hi and we can connect together. So just check it out through the website, cindydole.com. All right, so something that I'm always uh, trying to tackle is storage. Doesn't it seem like there's just never enough? Never enough. Even after you get organized, there it is again. The closet is somehow getting messy again or the garage or whatever. Well, uh, you know, what is it about storage? Like we talked about with designers Christine Santana uh, last week, which you can listen to again if you go to the on-air section. Her idea is when you store things in a closet... Put the things that you use the least, kind of makes sense, kind of like a no-brainer, the use the least, the highest density basis, but you might need it just occasionally, right? Well, that applies, of course, also to that store area in the garage. Now, maybe you don't have time to reorganize the entire garage, who does, in just a weekend. But if you want to feel like you're making those baby steps and checking off that to-do list and feeling some sense of satisfaction, you can do these things really like today or tomorrow. Like, first of all, how about a recycling center? You can hang a cabinet to collect the things, those things you want to recycle, like batteries or whatever that you're not ready to throw away now that you can't throw them in the curbside bin. You have to wait for that recycling schedule, put the guidelines in the schedule in front of the cabinet, store those things inside, boom, you're done. And it looks a lot lot neater and nicer, right? How about a cleaning and auto care little area in your garage? You can stock and care the things on a rolling cart that you put just up to the side of the wall in your garage. And then you can bring it right up to your vehicle when it's time, right? And then, of course, you can use that wall space uh, above it to store a handheld vacuum, mops, brooms, all those things, again, to take care of the car. How about bulk storage, right? Those things that you probably do with the uh, the Costco run, the Smart and Final run. Consider one of those sturdy metal shelving units. You can even get those on wheels, too, to keep the supplies organized and in view. Paper products on top, medium-sized cleaning products in the middle, and the heaviest things like dog food, bulk bag foods in the bottom. And you can even find those at uh, Target or Target as I like to call it. So hopefully you get some things done today or tomorrow. Can't believe it. The end has come. Our friend, the film freak, Leo, is up next, right? In September, 
is coming already. Check it out at CindyDole.com. Do check in with me and remember that we have a lot coming up next Saturday. All right? Like. Are you ready for this? We're going to talk with the auction house Bunnams and Butterfields on the auction that will be showcasing furniture and art that belongs to Daddy Reynolds, who bought the props and the furniture, the chandeliers from MGM and 20th Century Fox. And then we're going to find out how to grow your food. Everyone's doing it. But then how to use things you have to make your landscape more interesting. It's all coming up next Saturday. And until then, remember this, the key is under the mat. Bye-bye.